Hello, my name is Diane, and today I'm going to talk about all of the books I read in August. August was not a very good reading month for me. I have seven books to talk about. Three of those were DNFs. Two of the ones that I finish, I didn't really like that much. I was pretty disappointed with them. And the other two I actually did enjoy. So I'm going to talk about them in that order, starting with the ones that I didn't even finish. And we'll end on a high note with the books that I enjoyed that I finished. So of the three books I DNF'd, one of those was Rule of Wolves by Leigh Bardugo. This is the second book in the King of Scars duology, which is part of the Grishaverse. It's centered around Nikolai, but it also very heavily follows Nina and Zoya, following the events of the original Shadow and Bone trilogy. I was pretty disappointed with King of Scars, to be honest. It wasn't really what I expected going into that book, and it, it did some interesting things. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't nearly as good as I had wanted it to or what I had anticipated it being. So I have been very on the fence for a very long time about if I even want to bother reading the second book. And not surprisingly, I just really wasn't that into it. I don't have anything bad to say about it. I didn't even get that far into it that I can really speak on what exactly it covers and where the plot goes or may have gone had I finished it. But I just didn't feel very engaged still. It's also been a few years since I read King of Scars, so even that distance really didn't help my reading experience of a follow-up to a book that I didn't really love to begin with. But I'm glad I can finally just put this series behind me and say at least I tried, it's just not for me. Another book that I DNF'd is The Jassad Air by Sarah Hashem. This book follows a main character, Sylvia, who is from a kingdom that has been conquered. The royal family has been killed, or at least that's what she would have everyone believe. She is part of the royal family and survived, and she has been living in hiding and keeping her magic under wraps because that would give her away. And I just did not care about this book at all when I was reading it. I didn't really like the way that it was written. I think the premise is very interesting. The idea behind it is very cool, but it wasn't anything especially unique to keep me going, and I just didn't like the voice it was written in. This is written in first-person perspective from Sylvia's point of view, and I just did not want to be in her head. <laughs> Some of the things she was saying or thinking felt like they were contradicting what was actually going on and just the way that she seemed to think of herself didn't really work for me at all, did not make me want to care about her or see what happens to her. So I, I just gave up on this. I didn't even really get to the big hook of the story. It felt like it was taking too long to get there. And I just didn't want to spend any more time inside of this character's head, so <laughs> I gave up on it, unfortunately. But what can you do when you just don't like the main character? And the final book that I DNF'd was The Sun in the Void by Gabriela Romero La Cruz. This book follows two main characters, Reina, who was saved by her grandmother's magic and now will do anything she can to stay in her good graces as sort of a thanks for that. And Ava, who magic is forbidden where she is and magic calls to her and she is trying to keep quiet about how drawn to magic she actually is because she's not allowed to use it. This book just didn't really do anything for me. I wasn't really into either character. And I also didn't feel like the two perspectives were distinct enough to make either character really stand out to me. And it just, I don't know, I don't have anything specific that I didn't like about this or that I thought was not working. I just overall, the story didn't really hook me at all. So at some point I had to say, I don't really want to invest any more time in a story that I'm 
not invested in and gave up on it. This was kind of disappointing because it felt like so many people were excited about this book before it released. And then afterwards, I didn't feel like I heard very much about it. So I think this just fell into a bunch of mixed reviews. Unfortunately, I was on the side that just the story didn't do anything for me and I didn't even want to spend the time finishing it. I've been pretty brutal about DNFing things, deciding I just don't like this, it's not for me. And I have so many things that I want to be reading right now that I don't want to waste time on stories I'm not really excited to pick up whenever I pick them up. And this was just one of those books I just wasn't really excited to get back into the world because I was never that invested in the world. I wasn't that engaged with the characters or their lives. And those are just stories that unfortunately I don't ever feel a need to push through and hope it gets better. I'm okay with just saying this really isn't working. <laughs> maybe it's timing, maybe it's just not to my taste, but I'd rather set it aside and read something that is going to make me excited to pick it up whenever I do. So those are the three books that I did not finish last month and don't think I will ever go back to and give a second shot. I just don't think any of them were for me, although they do all have very interesting premises and I'm sure work for a lot of other people. Of the books I did finish, one of them was The Shadow of Perseus by Claire Haywood. This is a retelling of the story of Perseus through the eyes of Danae, Medusa, and Andromeda. There are three female characters whose lives were in some way impacted by Perseus, and they are recounting that interaction with him, whatever role he played in their lives, and showing why Perseus was not actually the hero that he thinks he is or that everyone regards him as. He actually did a lot of really negative things and did not impact their lives in positive ways like everybody seems to think. This fell pretty flat for me. I First off, I'm not really into Greek myth retellings, so I went into this with a bias, so take my opinion with a grain of salt, but I just didn't feel like the female characters in this, even though it is fully their story and it's supposed to be their side of the events of things, and it is their side of what happened and it does flip the lens on the classic story of Perseus as this hero. But I just didn't feel like the female characters had much agency in their own stories. They're telling what happened to them, but they're just telling things that happened to them. And I didn't feel like any of them had any real initiative or agency in the story that was happening other than saying, actually, it happened this way and just kind of retelling it, but I didn't feel like they were did anything, if that makes sense. There didn't seem to be a whole lot of action on their ends. It was just their view of things, which is kind of the whole setup of the story, I know, but I just want my main characters to do something and not just say what someone else did. So, I don't know, this didn't work for me. I really wasn't surprised because it is a Greek myth retelling and just that general premise isn't something that really typically excites me, but it does work really well sometimes. This, for me personally, was just not one of those times. I also finished The Saint of Bright Doors by Vajra Chandrasekhara. This follows a main character, Fetter, who was trained to kill his father. That is how he was brought up and he leaves that rural life behind where he was brought up and raised and moves to this city to kind of start a new life. The city has these bright doors throughout it. They're very mysterious, magical portals. They don't really know where they go, or at least Fetter doesn't know where they go. And we just kind of go through his settling into this city and exploring these bright doors, trying to figure out what's going on and just there's a rebellion brewing, there's all of these things within the city going on that Fetter is learning about and becoming involved with. This book just didn't really grip me. I think it started off really interesting and in exploring this world. I do think the Bright Doors are very interesting. 
there were a lot of cool things happening within this story. This is another book that I went into with a bit of bias. Urban fantasies are extremely hit or miss for me, typically more miss than hits, but I do like to give them a shot once in a while when they have something unique to bring to that subgenre. In this case, I think this story did bring some unique things. It just never really hooked me the way that the plot was unfolding just didn't feel as cohesive as I was hoping for, and I just never felt too invested in Fetter as our main character. I don't know that this is a bad book at all, it just was not a great book for me personally. So I enjoyed it, I enjoyed exploring those unique elements that it did have, but as a story overall, it's not one that's really stuck with me since I finished it. Now onto the books that I finished that I did really enjoy. One of those was Gods of the Weirdwood by R.J. Barker. The story follows a main character, Kahan, who has a very mysterious past and he now lives alone. He just wants to live his life more or less in seclusion. He's known as the forester because he is able to safely navigate the magical forest that he lives near that most people cannot pass through safely or successfully. And he is approached by someone to help find a missing child. And the story kind of goes from there as you get to know his relationship with the forest, a little bit about his past. He does pick up some companions along the way and you get to know them. I really liked Khan as a character. I really loved his relationship with the forest and I really loved the forest as a setting within this world. It was just so interesting and magical and mysterious and I really liked his kind of bond with the forest and his understanding of it and relationship. I also really liked his dynamic with the companions that he picks up along the way. I really love seeing those types of dynamics of characters, main characters meeting each other and how their relationship bonds and establishes as they go through the world together. Nothing too specific or deep to it, just when characters kind of click and get to know each other and work with each other. And just seeing little pieces of this world, the story does take a little bit to really get into the main plot and get going. But for me, that was fine because I was enjoying the characters and just exploring the world and the setting. That was totally fine for me. If you're a very plot-driven reader, I don't know how well this would work because it takes a bit to get into the plot. And even then, it does kind of meander a little bit. But for me, it did so in an interesting way, so I was not bothered by that at all. This is the first book in a series, so I am looking forward to whenever the sequel comes out, getting back and exploring more of this world with these characters. I just thought it was a very nice atmospheric book, and I tend to enjoy those. I like books with characters that I like hanging out with. And the final book that I read in August, and also my favorite read of the month, was Morgan Is My Name by Sophie Keach. This is a Arthurian retelling following the earlier life of Morgan Le Fay. You follow her from being a young girl when Uther Pendragon first enters her life and becomes her stepfather through her falling in love and being sent away to kind of keep her in line. She gets sent to a nunnery and you see her discovering magic and falling in love with what it can do with healing. She's very interested in knowledge and medicine and things like that. But unfortunately, Uther's vision for her future is not in line with her own and she is very much at odds with him for her entire life. I really liked this. I really liked the way Morgan was portrayed in this story. I personally like Arthurian retellings. I know that they're not for everyone. This is very much focused on just Morgan. Obviously, Uther is a main force in her life. You do meet Merlin a bit, the Lady of the Lake, who is called Minian in this. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, in this version. 
and Arthur is also present, although not a huge character. A lot of Arthurian retellings tend to focus on Arthur and Merlin specifically, and everyone else just kind of revolves around them. So I really liked seeing something surrounding Morgan specifically, because I've always thought she was an interesting character. And to see her earlier years portrayed at, was really cool for me. And I just liked seeing her go through her life. It's very focused on her and her experience in coming into her power is kind of the overarching plot of the story. But you see her relationship with her family, her learning about medicine and magic, and her potential to get into maybe darker magic down the line. And overall, I just really liked the way this was written. I thought it was very engaging. I really liked the characters and just going through the lifespan with her of just the earlier years and then kind of ending where most of the retellings typically pick up with everyone being back in Camelot and all of those things kicking off. So that was everything that I read in August. Not my best reading month quality wise, but I did read a lot of things that I was planning to, that I had been hoping to read, a lot of new releases that I had been anticipating. Unfortunately, they weren't all winners for me, but I'm glad that I tried them all and at least I know dabbled around in some subgenres that don't tend to work for me and unfortunately still don't work for me, but <laughs> at least I'm still giving them a try. I still like trying genres and stories outside of my comfort zone because there are those hidden gems every once in a while that do really work for me. And I don't want to knock a story just because I don't tend to like similar stories. But I also did find a couple of stories that I really loved, so I can't complain about that at all. Let me know what the best thing you read in August was. I'd love to hear about that. That's all for me today. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'll see you next time. Bye.